Hello everyone, I'm Shivana this side and this video is on sperm donor single parenthood and UK law related to these issues. And uh, this is also a very important topic from examination point of view. So regarding the sperm donor, there may be many reasons why a woman may need sperm donation to start a family. She may be a single woman and wants to start a family on her own, or they can be a heterosexual couple where the male partner is infertile or a homosexual couple who are unable to have children together. So let's discuss about the sperm donors, single parenthood, UK laws and legal issues related to them. Regarding the sperm donor, the recommended age is between 18 to 45 years. They should be healthy with no serious medical condition. They may or may not be having children of their own. Semen analysis should be normal. Donated sperm is used to fertilize eggs, either using artificial insemination technique or IVF treatment, that is having a test tube baby, both of which take place within a fertility clinic. What about payment to sperm donors in UK? No, they are not paid at all in UK because it is against the UK law. They may be given some compensation money like travel expenses, clinic visits, and this is given as a lump sum money once the process of sperm donation is complete. What about the screening test for sperm donors? This is very important. Semen analysis has to be done. It should be normal. And the donor should be offered blood test to rule out infections like HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, syphilis, and HTLV, which is the human telephotrophic virus. This can affect the white blood cells and interfere with immunity. Urine test to rule out sexually transmitted infections like chlamydia and gonorrhea. And of course, karyotyping is important to exclude genetic and inherited conditions. How to find sperm donors? So it can be by three ways. So even in simulated patient task, if you get a station where there is a single mother and she wants to start a family and she asks about how she is going to get sperm donors, then you can counsel her that there are three ways in which you can find sperm donors. One is the private arrangement in which the woman can use a donor already known to her, like a friend, or she can meet a donor through an agency or website. This can be a bit quicker as it takes less time. Then another way is uh, getting sperms from sperm banks in certified fertility clinics. Here, women can use a sperm from an anonymous that is an unknown donor by going to certified fertility clinics. These clinics are run by Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority. These clinics have their own stock of frozen donated sperms. These certified clinics will guarantee legal and medical protection by screening for infections and inherited conditions. However, the waiting times will be longer. Another way to get the donor's sperm is via reproductive tourism. In this, the woman can go abroad for treatment with donor's sperm. The advantages are the cost of treatment may be lower. There is greater chance of availability of donors, less waiting times. However, regulations and laws that is legal and medical issues may vary from UK law. So women are advised to always do a thorough research before going ahead with treatment abroad. Chances of finding a donor very quick is very slim in UK because they are not anonymous anymore. There is a huge shortage of sperm donation in UK and it is also not funded by the NHS. What informations can be disclosed regarding the donor? So donor's name, date of birth, and his address is not disclosed at all. He will be anonymous. A pen portrait can be given, that is his ethnicity. Some personal features like color of his eyes and hair can be disclosed. 
What about legal issues and father's name on the birth certificate? Father's name will be assigned as unknown at birth. Donor will have no legal rights over the baby. The woman will be the legal mother and she will have all the legal rights. What about other legal issues? If the woman is married or she is in a civil partnership, her spouse will automatically be the child's second legal parent. She will be the first legal parent of the baby. But if the woman is in a relationship, she is not married, then her partner will be the second legal parent only if they both sign the relevant legal parenthood consent form. Now, these children born through the donor's sperms, they have the legal rights to find out their biological father's name and address after the age of 18 years. It is important to remember that if a woman goes to a UK licensed fertility clinic, that is the certified fertility clinics, then the donor has no legal responsibility or rights towards the child. However, this is not necessarily the necessarily the case when treatment takes place via private arrangement where the donor is known to the woman or if the treatment takes place in other countries via reproductive tourism. Here the laws can differ. Regarding screening tests for women before donor insemination, so ovulation has to be checked and confirmed, tubal patency test needs to be done, Women should also be offered the blood test to screen for immunity and infections like rubella immunity, HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C virus. Genital swabs should be taken to rule out any sexually transmitted infections. There is few more important issues. Single women opting for donor insemination should ensure that they have to take the full legal and financial responsibilities of the upcoming baby. They should also have someone to look after the baby if something happens to them. So even in simulated patient tasks, we need to inquire uh, the woman, the role player, that may I know what you do for a living to make sure that they are financially sound and financially independent. And we should know whether whom they are living with, how about the support at home, and who is going to support the upcoming baby in their absence. So this was all about the donor sperm, single parenthood, and the UK law pertaining to them. I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. I shall be uploading more videos from the examination point of view. Do look out for them. And all the best. Happy studying. Happy revision. Thank you.